Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this video we are going to Zama, the city of Zama, Japan, to look at a monster who believed that life had no meaning whatsoever. And following up on this belief, he used Twitter to stalk and lure victims back to his tiny, tiny apartment. It's a very, very small apartment, but he, he made a, you know, he made that space work, as you will see. It was an apartment of horrors. But before we get into that, if you would like to see crime and bizarre plot videos every week, please subscribe because this is all about that chapter of life. Now let's give it a go. The city of Zama, it lies in the Kanagawa Prefecture, which is part of the Tokyo Megalopolis region. I mean, the city of Tokyo, it's just so, it's just so sprawling. It's kind of hard to say when the city actually ends and becomes another. That is where Zama lies. Now, Japan, it's pretty well known for being, you know, quite safe, not very many killers there. So when one, you know, does, when it hits the news, it tends to be quite shocking. And then, usually the killers that hit the news tend to be quite shocking themselves. It's always, like, mad stuff. This, it's one of them, and it is the story of Shiraishi Takahiro, who was born and raised in the city of Zama, a man who would later be dubbed the Twitter Killer. He was born on October 9th, 1990, and growing up with his parents and his younger sister, he was basically described as a pretty quiet, unremarkable child. He kept, you know, to himself. He went to the local elementary school and the local high school uh, in class. You know, his grades, they weren't great. They weren't terrible. Pretty, pretty much like he was the kind of person where not many people would, would really remember him. But, you know, he, he worked as hard as he could. He, you know, um, he never missed the days, a day of school outside of the classroom. He was on the baseball team. He was on the track team. Not really like a star athlete and nothing really about him stood out. Like people would later say about him, he was, you know, a pretty quiet guy. The kind of guy who would rather listen to you speak about yourself than speak about himself. But one thing that was like a little, just a little bit off, was that Takahiro and his friends, for fun, they would often choke each other. Now, you know, back then it was just, hey, guys being dudes, you know. Um, but kind of, you know, in retrospect, pretty weird. And in normal spec too. Takahiro's parents would divorce just as he was finishing high school. Something which seemed to kind of bother him quite a bit. And then in 2009, when he graduated high school, he would go and work in a local supermarket for about two years. He did that full time before quitting, and he would have brief stints in a couple of other jobs. He would work in a food factory, in a pachinko parlor. And then he made... He made quite the leap, you could say, from his previous jobs, you know, working at the, at, at the checkout, you know, sacking shelves. Because he made the leap from, kind of, those jobs to becoming involved in sex trafficking. He went straight to the red light district of Tokyo. Kabukicho is the entertainment district in Shinjuku, Tokyo. Nicknamed the Sleepless Town. It's home to bars, clubs, restaurants, and love hotels. Sounds great. But it's also largely run by the Yakuza, you know, the Japanese Mafia, so kind of maybe a little bit dicey at times. Um, and as you can imagine, like, there's a lot of crime there. And not just violent crime, but, you know, drug dealing and sex trafficking. It's the kind of place where you don't really want to forget the hand sanitizer. And nice, you know, quiet, unremarkable Takahiro, he ended up there. He ended up becoming what was called a scout. For, for the gangs in the area, and what he did was lure women into becoming sex workers. Essentially tricking them into joining the sex trade and then probably becoming sex trafficked themselves. He was described by those who knew him at that time as ambitious, dangerous man who was capable of betrayal. And another woman who knew him said he was unusually more gentle than ordinary people, but was fascinated with death, including hurting himself. Now, as you may be aware, Japan is unusually tolerant 
to the idea of, of hurting yourself, it's pretty embedded in the culture, like these ideas of self-harm and seppuku and all that kind of stuff going back, you know, hundred centuries. It has one of the highest rates of suicide in the world. Only neighboring South Korea is beating it out uh, on that level. And so Takahiro's kind of obsession with morbid stuff like, like self-harm and death and that kind of thing probably wasn't seen as quite as strange as it would have been, you know, in Western countries. Now, Takahiro, he was arrested for scouting in February 2017. Ah, finally! And he was sentenced to 14 months in prison, but that sentence would be suspended, and he would get a three-year suspended sentence. So he stopped working in the Kabukicho area, and he went back home uh, to be with his dad. Now, remember, his parents had split, so his, he was living with his dad, his, his mother, and his younger sister. They had left to go off somewhere else. And Takahiro was very close with his dad, as I said, you know, they lived together and his dad, uh, for, for work, he would design car parts and that sort of thing. And he had his own workshop and Takahiro would often be there, you know, helping him out in the workshop. They would go out for dinner together and all that sort of stuff. However, it seems Takahiro's obsession with, well, death, uh, started going overboard in the summer of 2017. So a couple of months after he had left uh, Kabuki show and all that kind of stuff. Around that time, he said to his dad, I don't know why I'm alive. Then, in the August of that year, August 2017, he told his dad that he had met the love of his life. He hadn't. And that he wanted to move into his own uh, little apartment. And so he asked his dad to be guarantor of this apartment. His dad said, yep, sure thing, buddy, you got it. Uh, so he moved into this other apartment, which was in a neighborhood from where he was from in Zama. It was about a mile. From where he grew up. He moved in there on the 22nd of August and it seems that then maybe being alone was not the best thing for him because it seems his fascination with death and with morbidity and all that kind of stuff, well he just, Takahiro decided the self part not so much but the harm part a big yes. Hi. And the method he used to explore this fascination he had was Twitter. In September 2017, a profile was created on Twitter. The username, Hanging Pro. The name, Hangman. And as you can see, the profile picture was an anime-style dude with cuts on his wrists, neck, and a noose. Subtle. The bio read, I want to help those who are having a hard time. DM me. Let me just read out what his pinned post was. People are bullied all the time at school and work, and when you can't handle the place you go every day and the people there, that'll push you further and further mentally. I think lots of people are suffering and attempting suicide, even if the news isn't covering it. I want to help these people. You probably have a good idea of what help means, what he is kind of implying by there. Like, on first glance, it looks like he's just trying to help people maybe who are going through a dark period of their lives, who he just wants to help out, right? Maybe help them get better, see the light, people who are depressed, whatever. That's not what he was meaning. He was meaning something a hell of a lot darker. Otherwise, on the platform, he would retweet cute pictures of cats and dogs, and he would also tweet other posts about self-harm and so on. As I said, through this, he would meet people who wanted to hurt themselves under the guise of helping them. In October 2017, Aiko Tamura disappeared. She herself was a, was a Tokyo native, and at 23 years of age, she posted about on Twitter, self-harm and that kind of thing. Just a couple of months previous, her mother, her mother had sadly passed away, and that was something which absolutely devastated her and let her down this, this path. She then disappeared. She was last seen on October 21st, 2017. It was Aiko's brother who began looking for her, frantically trying to find, you know, the sister who he, he loved dearly before she could do something to herself he couldn't undo. He was mad and frantic to find her upon learning that she hadn't been seen. He went to, to her friends, to her work, to everywhere, and he could not find any single trace of her at all. Twitter is huge in Japan. It's much bigger than the other social sites like, like Facebook, Instagram. Twitter's way bigger. So what Aiko's brother did, you know, in his desperation to find out where she was, you know, reading what she'd been tweeting about and fearing the worst, 
he then went to her Twitter to see who she had been interacting with. And then what he did was he managed to get access to her Twitter account. He figured out her password and he saw that she had been DMing Hanging Pro. Ico's brother, then he took all of this to the police as, well, strong indications that something horrible had happened. See, Ico had contacted Hanging Pro back in September. She contacted him about doing a, a suicide pact that she didn't want to go alone. It was then a month later, on the 23rd of October, so a couple of days after she'd last been heard from, that CCTV would capture Ico and Hanging Pro at a, at a train station and then walking towards his apartment. Then, so to try and track down exactly who this guy was and what was going on, an unidentified woman contacted Ico's brother, because Ico's brother was putting the word out on Twitter, anybody who has met with Hanging Pro, who is this guy, essentially? So this unidentified woman, she contacted him and she says, I've met him. I've met him in person. Now, she didn't go to his apartment. They just met up, went for a walk, and that was it. But this time she said, I can organize to meet up with him again. And this time I'll, I'll go, to his, go to his place. So the police were then involved. And this became like a sting, kind of a stakeout operation. It was Halloween 2017. You know, a time when everybody's wearing masks and costumes. Except the real monster was not wearing any costume at all. The police were watching everything the entire time as this woman, she met up with Hanging Pro Takahiro at a train station and the pair of them then walked together back to his apartment. And a couple of minutes, you know, after they went in together, the police rocked up, knocked on his door. Takahiro, he opened the door and the police said, here, listen, we're investigating the disappearance of Aiko Tamura. Do you have any information you can share with us? So then what Takahiro did was he looked at them and then he looked back into his apartment and then he said, she's in the cooler. The cooler was right there. The officers went into his apartment, down on the ground, they looked at it, they opened it and what they saw staring back at them was Aiko's head. On the floor of his apartment were seven more boxes and coolers. This then became a crime scene and the police Shut that shit down. This is the layout of Takahiro's actual apartment. Absolutely tiny. And in there, they would find another eight heads. Littered throughout were arms, legs, and hundreds of bones. And in those boxes, those orange boxes, inside each were human remains. You can imagine how it smelt. Or better yet, do not. And they also found saw. Knives, ropes, all covered in the unmistakable dark brown of old blood. They also found multiple bank cards, medical cards, and other items belonging to the victims. Neighbors would say they smelt foul, rotting flesh coming from his apartment and the bins that he would use outside. Takahiro, he would dispose of the flesh and the organs, but he kept the bones. He also tried to discover what he disposed of with kitty litter. It didn't really work. Like, neighbors would say they often saw him using, you know, using the bins an unusual amount. And the extractor in his bathroom was on 24-7. Takahiro Shiraishi was initially arrested and charged with abandoning bodies, but that would swiftly change. あの、Now initially his lawyers tried to say, okay, listen, this is not this is not what it what it looks like. Was he involved in what happened to them? Sure, but this was murder with consent. These were all people who just wanted to har harm themselves anyway. And T Takahiro said here, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. I'll help you along this, you know, I'll give you a hand. But Takahiro himself would tell a different story to his own lawyers. He would say that all of these victims who were found, they expressed online that they wanted to hurt themselves. But when it came down to it, when he met them in person, no, they didn't. None of his victims consented to death. And when he would actually come forward and confess 
he he didn't deny he didn't deny what he had done for a second when he was confessing to the police he said it had nothing to do with self harm and that kind of stuff he murdered these people for two reasons for sex and for money he did it because these people they couldn't turn him down and he also would steal all the money they had and whatever he could sell of the 9 victims found 8 were women one was a man the boyfriend of one of the women that his first victim see he had met up with this woman after hanging pro had been dming her online they went out for dinner and drinks but takihiro was a little bit annoyed when her boyfriend joined them also so then a couple of days later he messaged this woman again and they met up alone she went to his apartment and she never left a couple of days later the boyfriend showed up to takihiro's apartment saying where's my where's my girlfriend he went inside also and did not come back what he would do was invite all his victims over he would then drug them with alcohol uh, sleeping pills and tranquilizers and then when they were unconscious he would strangle them to death and then to dispose of the remains he would cut them up and he said that his first victim it took him three days to dismember but after that he had it he had it down to one day to dismember them the oldest victim 26 years of age four of them were teens three in high school one of them only 15 years old it was nine victims over two months as soon as he moved into that apartment he started looking for victims online looking for people who would were vulnerable essentially people he felt he could lure over um, with his page that was all about self-harm and that kind of thing he would dm them start chatting talk about what they would talk about and then he would get them over to his apartment drug them kill them chop them up keep parts of them in his apartment at trial takihiro fought his own defense he said nope the the indictments are true everything the police um said is true he did it all uh like his, his defense that you know they were trying to find oh he's not mentally competent he wasn't in control of his own actions but psychologists examined him for five months they found he was fine he knew every single thing he was doing he was all there and he was found guilty of all nine murders he was sentenced to death the death sentence in japan is carried out with a noose <laughs> ると、I don't really feel a deep sense of regret. In any case, I am sorry only because I failed when I got caught. If I wasn't arrested, I will not be regretting anything. To be fair, he's refreshingly honest for a psychopathic monster. はい、you got me. You got me fair and square. I'm annoyed you got, you got me, but I'm not annoyed. You know, I'm not remorseful for anything I've done. He, he said he would not appeal his sentence. Pretty much just accepted that, yeah, he was a monster. He did not feel empathy for any other human being ever his entire life. And he did what he did. Straight up. This is, once again, 
Like we've seen in other stories of monsters prowling the internet, a story of a man seeking out some of the most vulnerable in society. Unfortunately, monsters do exist, and he is most definitely one of them. Someone who was never sorry about what he did, only that he was caught. If he hadn't been, he would have kept it up. Takahiro was a creature who embodied the darkness, like a spider who hid in the pits of despair, finding you when you were at your most vulnerable, luring you into his web, and then devouring whoever he could. It's an incredibly tragic story of these nine people who just wanted someone to be there. They thought there was no way out, and when it came to it, they knew life was worth living. Unfortunately, that spider Takahiro already had them in his grasp. So he now is on death row, uh, now these many years later, um, he has, he's still alive, he's still in, in prison. He said he's, he does want to get married, um, he gets fan mail all the time, um, he hasn't responded to any yet, I guess he just hasn't been the right one. But he said that, you know, yeah, looking to get married, so that'd be pretty, pretty cool. Um, good luck to whatever unlucky woman that is. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here watching this old video with me. Um, I hope you found it as batshit as I did. Uh, if you're looking for more of That Chapter content, please check out the That Chapter podcast on all podcast platforms. So give that a go for lots of exclusive podcast-only stories. But until the next old video, which will probably be in a couple of days, take care of each other and yourselves because I love you for watching. Mike out.